Whatever the situation may be, we can't always predict the future of what will happen to us next. All we can do is prepare. From surviving the temperatures of the desert to escaping a flaming plane, here are nine important survival tips you need to know. But first, thanks DJ Plays for leaving us this comment. Survival tips are certainly important and American Eye is happy to bring you more. Let us know in the comment section some extra tips and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video. Number 9. Survive the Heat Summertime is certainly approaching and many people want to go outside and enjoy the summer sun. However, many people don't always realize that the sun can be a silent killer especially if you don't properly prepare. Each year, just in the US, 675 people die from heat-related complications. One common reason for this is heat strokes, which is when the entire body can reach up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Symptoms of a heat stroke may include a massive headache, racing heart rate, blurred vision, and confusion. It's normally a result of dehydration and from your body failing to regulate its own temperature. You'd be surprised how common this is, especially among young athletes and tourists. The first thing you need to do is drink plenty of water and get into the shade. It's always better to carry about twice the amount of water you think might be needed. Don't drink water too fast though. If you've gone a long period without water and you finally come across some, your first instinct will be to drink it fast. But don't do that. It's suggested not to drink more than 1.5 quarts of water per hour during intense workouts and also to consume some salt along with this water. This is known as hyponatremia and it's been known to affect marathon runners in the past. Also, be careful about chewing gum when outside, especially because this is known to tap into your body's water supply. Number 8. Avoid Shallow Water Blackouts this summer season, you're probably thinking about hitting the pools or beaches, snorkeling, and doing some swimming. Drowning is one of the major causes of death while at a pool or beach, and a lot of the time it's caused by shallow water blackouts. This is when a swimmer faints while swimming and it can also lead to drowning. As a kid, you may have tried a competition to see how long you can hold your breath underwater, but it's recommended that you don't do this in order to avoid shallow water blackouts. What really triggers it is not a lack of oxygen, but the elevation of carbon dioxide that's wanting to leave the body. A lot of the time, it's caused directly from hyperventilating, ignoring your urge to breathe, breath holding games, and repetitive laughs without breathing. You can go underwater for extended periods of time, just go back up when you feel like you have to breathe. If shallow water blackouts occur when no one is around, it can quickly lead to drowning and death. Number 7. Prepare for Mosquitoes when mankind is in Mother Nature's backyard, she makes the rules and you better be prepared to follow what she has in store for you. Once you venture off past the cozy confines of civilization, there are several kinds of animals you need to be ready to interact with. Especially in summer months near bodies of water, people will often encounter mosquitoes which can often carry deadly diseases. And even if they don't have a disease, they will certainly leave you with an itchy bite that will make you end up scratching yourself non-stop. There are ways to avoid mosquitoes and one of them includes wearing light colors. Mosquitoes are more active during dusk and light clothing will confuse them while they're searching for the horizon. Although light colors are good against mosquitoes, bright colors will attract bees and wasps so choose your colors wisely. Others believe that eating garlic might help prevent you from getting attacked by mosquitoes, but the reason is unclear. Maybe because they're like blood-sucking vampires? Who knows? Number 6. Falling Trees Especially during summertime, more and more trees will become dehydrated, which means they have a better chance of falling. You'd really be surprised how many people get injured or even killed just from falling trees. They can destroy homes, cars, and even you. There's a good reason why lumberjacks have one of the most dangerous jobs out there and it's not always from the chainsaws. Over 100 people are killed by tree accidents in the US each year and if you're considering building a shelter for yourself out in the woods, you should truly be careful when chopping wood and figuring out which way it's going to fall. Those trees are a lot heavier than they look. You don't even really need to be chopping down trees for them to injure you. Storms, strong winds, animals, or even just from old age can lead to trees falling too. And it might sound strange, but it needs to be taken more seriously. Some trees in Central Park have fallen, which have led to million dollar lawsuits. Hunters and even kids will enjoy climbing trees for fun, but trees might not always be as sturdy as they look. So if you end up building a settlement for the zombie apocalypse or whatever the case may be, steer clear for constructing it near any decaying trees while hiding out in the forest. Number 5. Watch out for Riptides Going to the beach is certainly a fun activity, but it can also be less fun when you're getting dragged away from the shore by being caught in a riptide. More than 100 Americans die each year from drowning in riptides. The first step for surviving a riptide is realizing that you're in a riptide. 
professionals prefer the word rip current since it has nothing to do with the tide, but it can be an RIP current if you don't listen up to these survival tips. It's basically a narrow channel of water that flows outwards towards the sea, and it might take you a while before you even realize it. The rip currents tend to have a little bit of a different color from the rest of the sea and might be a little bit more foamy and choppier than other parts. Swimming against the rip tide is certainly a challenge, and the best thing you can do is not to swim against it. This will exhaust you and even some of the most experienced swimmers. If you find that you're in shallow waters, it's best to try to walk and not swim. To escape the current, you need to try to swim parallel to the shore for a while and then try to swim ashore. If you're an inexperienced swimmer, just cry for help. Number 4. Surviving a Plane Crash Each and every year, thousands of people will get inside machines that fly over 7.5 miles in the sky. Although it's safer to fly in a plane than to take an automobile, that's not really saying much considering that there's 1.3 million fatalities from automobiles each year with an additional 20 to 50 million injuries. While aviation is getting safer, there are quite a few things you gotta watch out for. What ends up killing most passengers during plane crashes is actually the fire that engulfs the plane like you see here. If you're lucky, you can indeed survive the impact, despite popular belief. In fact, it's much rarer for no one to survive a crash than it is for everyone to lose their life. You have roughly 90 seconds to get out of all the wreckage after the plane hits the ground. Airplanes are made up of aluminum, and the heat that radiates off them can get quite intense. Fire can spread quickly on planes, so you just have to do your best to get away from the scene as possible. Keep a close eye on where the exits are on the plane. You should really also consider reading that safety manual that's normally right in front of you. Get that oxygen mask on you as quickly as possible, and then also practice a few brace positions which might actually work. For example, you can try curling up in a ball. This will keep your limbs from flying all over the place. Remain calm, brace for impact, and get the heck out of the crash scene, and you might be okay. Number 3. Bee Swarm Africanized honeybees were certainly an experiment that's gone wrong, and now these deadly bees get the nickname of killer bees because that's just what they can do. An ill-advised hybridization between Western and African bees, which was supposed to yield more honey, took place. However, swarms of bees escaped the experimental facility, and now they've gained access to the southern United States. These bees are much more aggressive and are known to follow you for up to a quarter mile if you disturb them. They swarm in large numbers, and they just don't like humans. Disturbing a killer beehive can draw up to 2,000 attacking bees, all coming straight for you. So what should you do in the case of disturbing a killer beehive? The first piece of advice we can give you would be to run as fast as possible. Most humans can move much faster than bees can, and if you were able to run a lap in gym class, that would be about the same distance as their attack range. Don't try to swat them, because this will basically only make them angrier, and that's not something you want to do. While this might expose your body to bee stings, you don't want anything to happen to that moneymaker. Number 2. Trapped on Open Water you and your buddies decide to have a great time on your boat when all of a sudden, a storm hits the seas. Your boat was damaged and you no longer have a way to get back to the shore. You're stuck at sea. Trying to survive on a floating boat can bring up some challenges and ultimately, being prepared for the situation is the best tip. But it's just not always that easy. Do your best to stay afloat and hope that rescue eventually arrives. The first thing you need to think of while waiting for rescue is, how am I going to get water? Your first option would be to capture rainwater since the ocean salt water is off limits and will cause kidney failure. Your next best option would be to drink fish fluids, which are often found in their spines, eyeballs, and their skin. Surviving the open seas isn't always pretty. Your next concern is going to be getting food, and if you found fish already, good job. Take your shoestrings and turn them into a fishing line. You can try to make a hook with a pocket knife and shards from aluminum cans. Worst case scenario, if a fellow survivor didn't make it, you can always eat them and resort to cannibalism. And number one, avoiding gators. Spring and summer is gator mating season and it's during this time of year when they are most aggressive and can bite harder than a great white shark. It's also the time of year when people want to start enjoying natural bodies of water where gators might be lurking. Fishing and swimming are both fun activities at lakes, but you better watch out because there are some monsters lurking beneath the murky waters. How do you keep yourself from becoming gator bait? There's an estimated 1.4 million gators living in Florida alone, and encounters can be fatal. First rule, you should never try to feed the alligators and never try to swim in the same bodies of water with them. This seems like common sense, but you'd be surprised. It's better to run than to hide. Alligators don't typically run fast, but they have been spotted climbing trees pretty well. If the running part didn't work, alligators typically don't want to fight you despite their aggressive appearance. Your final tip would be to make as much noise as possible by yelling and trying to scare them off. 
follow these tips and you should be able to survive the wilderness, or at least for the upcoming summer. Any suggestions on future videos? Leave us your idea in the comments section and maybe we'll feature it in an upcoming video.